Hey everyone! Do you guys know that there is a 3500 year old Egyptian obelisk in the Central Park, New York? So, in today's video, we are going through a secret history in the United States. Precisely, there is a hidden history in the United States that nobody knows about. Sometimes history is not what you have been told. Besides, it's so important to investigate the facts and sites in effort to get it through and knowledge it. Many people in the city of New York and elsewhere don't even know that there is an Egyptian obelisk there. Yet, it is a real Egyptian obelisk and there is a history around it. I wonder how many people who live in New York City stop to think about the history all around them. The obelisk is known as Cleopatra's Needle. Why don't we take a look at it? It has been in the Central Park since the 1880s. Certainly it is 3500 years old, I mean, built in 1460 BC at the time of Tutmose the Tory era. Which means there is something inside Central Park that is much older than the United States. It's incredible, right? Thutmose the Tory is a pharaoh who ruled Egypt around 1450 BC. Uh, I mean, he actually is one of the greatest pharaohs in Egypt because he expanded Egypt to its greatest size ever. Uh, and I did some research and I behold, I found out that there is a monument in the Central Park with the cartouche by Thutmose the Third Era. The monument, what I'm talking about, is the obelisk, the Cleopatra's Needles, I mean. On this obelisk, what is generally says is that Thutmose the Third was a great pharaoh in that he extended his gratitude to Amun-Ra for his greatness. Amun-Ra is the sun god, the most important god of all Egypt, for the simple reason that without the sun, it will be nothing. One interesting thing is, during the time of Thutmose the III, the top of the pyramid, what is called the capstone, would have been covered in gold, and that would have radiated all over there. Actually, where over a hundred obelisks in this all would have been lighting up all of ancient Egypt. Thutmose had two of obelisks made. One, like I said, is located in the Central Park, and the other one is located in London. Certainly, we need to understand a lot of things in attempt to know how Egypt works in that era, but one important thing that we can highlight is during the time of Thutmose the Tury, the obelisks were outside of his temple in Heliopolis. Do you guys know who or which is Heliopolis? Heliopolis was the Harvard of ancient Egypt. It is where all the important pharaohs went to school. Of course, the placement of this obelisk is very significant to New York City history. When we look at this obelisk in the Central Park, we can think of why there? Why did they place it at this spot? Who did they place it at this spot? What do you think, guys? Who was responsible for being it to the United States? I mean, it is another interesting and exciting history all around it. We can connect the Freemasons to this obelisk. I mean, the New York Masons, from transporting to the paying the actual erection, they were responsible for the obelisk being in the Central Park. The Egyptian obelisk was brought to New York by a fellow brother, Henry Honey Church Gorange. He was a Freemason, of course a Civil War veteran and a literal in the United States Navy. He arranged a furlough just so he could lead to the effort to bring the obelisk from Egypt to New York, Central Park. 
the obelisk is 70 feet. It was sent to New York in just one piece. Around 96th Street, they had built the Tristow Bridge and it is only used for the obelisk to get it to the Central Park. And he ran a church garnishing actually bored a hole through his vessel because the obelisk was too long to fit within it. Then they back well around in Kensman of it and they transported that all the way across the Atlantic Ocean. So the obelisk was sticking out the front of the ship, like you can take a look at right now on these photos. Also, there is a connection between the Zobelisk and the Vanderbilt family. William H. Vanderbilt founded the entire thing. The Vanderbilt family, they were the ones that made their money in the railroad business. I think you know this history. You know, guys, when Cornelius Vanderbilt passed away, he left his son, William, a hundred million dollars that would be worth two billion in two days morning. Uh, there is still a couple of Vanderbilts in the public eye. The question is, why would a family founded by railroad tycoons pay a fortune to bring this obelisk to America? I'm gonna answer this question on the part two of this video. See you soon.